Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video I'm going to take you step by step through how we recreate this sort of Polaroid effect in your photographs. Now most of the work in this is done with the curve so it's a different method to what I generally tend to use but it gives us a real level of control that's quite difficult to attain using some of the other options. As always there's a free preset available and the link is in the description below and stick around until the end because I can take you through a few other steps that will show you how to do things that you wouldn't normally get covered in the preset itself. So let's take a look at doing all of that right now. So this is the starting image before we've done any processing to it and you can see it's fairly flat, it's not particularly the most inspiring of images and it's just a, a detailed image that's a good candidate for this effect. So what I'm going to do is take you step by step through the process that I went through to create this effect. As always all our presets are just a starting point so you're still going to need to tweak each individual image to make sure you get the best result. So let's go through and see what I did to process this image. So we're going to start off in the develop module and come to the basics panel and there's only a couple of little tweaks I want to do to this. I want to give it a bit more contrast because it looks a little flat. So we're just going to boost the contrast. Nothing crazy, about 20, 25, somewhere around there, that's looking good. And we're going to come down, we're going to open the shadows up a little bit because it's a little dark in some of these areas and one of the things you've got with Polaroid images is that they weren't particularly dark, they were kind of crushed blacks in them. So let's take a look at doing that. So let's open the shadows up a little bit. Again, nothing drastic, probably around 10 to 15, somewhere around there, that's looking good. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to reduce the clarity a little bit just so we get a slight amount of haze in the image. We want a sort of certain element of softness because your Polaroid camera was never a particularly good camera. The lens was pretty cheap and the overall effect was slightly soft. So there's our starting point. Nothing drastic being done to the image, but it's our starting point. Next up, we're going to jump down to the tone curve, and this is where most of the work is going to be done. Now, normally you're going to be seeing the RGB image, and we're in the point curve linear mode, so if you're not in this, you just need to make sure you click the little symbol in the right-hand corner to switch between the two different modes. So let's just enable the mode we want to work with, and now we can start directly influencing the tone curve itself. Now, by default, you're going to be working in the RGB tone curve, but we can switch over and we can work with each individual color. So the RGB is affecting the tonal information across the entire image, whereas we can go in and adjust the color information inside the tone curve itself. So first of all, we're going to come down and we're going to work with the blue. Now, this is where most of the work is being done. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of points into this. So we're going to add three new points. I'm not too bothered where they are. It's just a starting point. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a sort of S curve and we're going to just boost the colors we want in this image. So we'll just drag the center point down and you can see what happens once we do that is we start to cool the, so start to warm the image up. We get rid of some of the blue. So this is the, the main sort of mid-tone blue of the information in the image itself and we're reducing that down. You see if we take that right the way down, we start to introduce more yellow into it, which is the opposing color. So don't want to go crazy with that small tweak probably around about that point. We're just going to boost up then in this area and we're going to do come down here and we're just going to tweak this ever so slightly to get it where I want. I'm trying to warm the image up but not make it crazy warm. I want to still retain some of the blue in there but not going mad with it. So that's pretty close to where I want to be, somewhere around there. If we do a before and after, you can see there it is. Pretty cool. And afterwards, we warm the image up. Now, this is a great way of dealing with any color cast you've got on an image as well. So there's various different uses that you can use these tone curves and jump into the different individual color channels. So next up, we're going to switch over and go into the green channel. We want to bring a little bit more sort of green tone to this. And this is quite a subtle effect. We're just going to add another two points in again. What we're going to do is we're going to take the darker information and we're going to crush that in the greens. So we're just going to bring that right the way up probably to a roundabout but there. And you see it starts to flatten the green tone in the image out. And we're just going to then flatten this line out to get it more linear. Again, nothing crazy. Just got a slight tweak up in this region. You can see we've got a lot of green information in these areas. We don't have a huge amount of green information in the mid-tone. So we're just adjusting this to bring that sort of little bit of greeny yellowness back into the image. Again, let's do a before and after so we can see the entire tweak. So there's our cool original image. There's where we are now. So we've added some of that sort of warmth into it. 
Now let's just jump back into the RGB channel and we're going to make a slight tweak on this as well. I want to crush the blacks a little more. So I'm going to add a point so we don't affect too much of the information in the sort of mid to high tones. I'm going to take the blacks and we're going to lift those up. And you see, as we do that, we'll start to crush the blacks a little bit. So we'll flatten this image down in the darker areas. So there's before, there's our starting image, there's afterwards. So you can see we get that nice sort of retro warmth to the image. And that's that pretty much done. So there's our basic overall effect. We could leave it there if we wanted to, but I want to go in and just add a little bit more character to this. So we're going to come down to the effect section and we're going to add a vignette. But we're going to customize the vignette a little more. By default, we've got the style which is set to high priority. We're going to change this to paint overlay because it gives a more pleasing effect. So we're going to do that, switch that on. We're going to bring in our vignette and you can see it just naturally darkens the corners down now as opposed to adding a darker overlay. So if we switch that back over to high priority, you can see we get a completely different type of effect in there. It kind of adjusts the colors as well. Whereas I want it to just have a painted effect. So it darkens things down, but doesn't change the color information. So we leave that there. We're going to bring the midpoint down ever so slightly. And we're going to bring the roundness down a little bit as well. So we're going to reduce that down a fair old amount, around 50 marks, somewhere around there. So let's take a look at before, take a look at after. So it's quite a natural looking effect. And when we crush the blacks, it works really, really well. Finally, we're going to come to the dehaze section. And we're just going to give that a little bit of a kick. So that's going to bring a little bit of contrast back into it. Again, I don't want to go crazy. We'll take this up to around about, around about 35 to 40, somewhere around there. That's looking pretty nice. So let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So there we go. We've got a nice effect. If we wanted to, we could come back in now and we could just sharpen some of this image up if we felt we wanted to get a bit more detail in there. So you need to come to the detail section, bump the sharpness up a little bit, and then use your masking by holding the Alt key down your keyboard, sliding that up to the right hand side. And then you can see and pick exactly what gets sharpened. So the more white areas, the more contrast edges are going to be sharpened. And I don't want too much. I just want to bring some detail back to the edge of the architecture. So let's just boost that up a little bit. And again, let's take a look at before and after. All pretty subtle. Obviously, there's a lot more you could do to this if you wanted to add some grain in there, if you wanted to tweak the image even further. You've got a whole range. And if you want to make it look like a Polaroid, we could easily square this image off. And to do that, we just simply come up to the crop, set the aspect ratio to be one to one, and there we go, that gives us the ability to have a nice square image and we can pick exactly what part of the image we want, hit done when we're finished, and there we go, we have more of a Polaroid type effect. Well, that's all there is to creating this effect in Lightroom. As always, the free preset is available in the link below. And if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below as well. And until next time, take care.